Hey guys, this is Comic Uno. Today I'm doing a review for Justice League issue 19. And uh, before I start talking about this issue, I just want to give you guys a little update. I have three reviews, actually four reviews on Dark Avenger Egg that I usually do on Comic Uno, which is Vibe issue 3, um, Green Lantern New Guardians issue 19, and uh, Ultimate Comics Wolverine issue 3. And I also have an advanced review on Dark Avenger Egg, which is Invincible issue 102. So if you want to go check out those reviews, just go to the description below and there'll be a link for Dark Avenger Inc. But let's talk about... Justice League issue 19. Um, let's talk about the cover. I love the art for Justice League. I think it fits really well for a flagship title. Flagship title, really Justice League in general, should be the best series for DC. Jeff Johns is behind it, so I like the art, you know, fits that. Is the story fit that? I don't know. We'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, great art. Misleading cover, though. Um, Batman's not holding any kryptonite, not even close, but someone does steal the kryptonite. So it's a little misleading for people who are picking up, wanting to see Batman become the villain. It's very misleading, but uh, it's a little good cover-ish. Um, I was a little disappointed how misleading it was, but we do see the kryptonite play some sort of, um, some sort of role in this issue. And let's see what happened in this issue. Uh, so we get to see in the beginning kind of a Batman type of story, and <laughs> we actually get to see um, Red Hood and Alfred, they're talking about Damien, which is kind of weird seeing in, um, in a Justice League issue, but Alfred actually breaks down and um, talks about Damien saying this was like my son also, uh, because really Alfred is pretty much like the father of Bruce, so Damien of course would be like the, the grandson of, of Alfred, and um, it was really, it was nice to see, not nice, but um, it was great story-wise to see that Alfred broke down. You know, we have we saw Alfred become that that backbone for um, Bruce, and really seeing him break down was interesting in this issue. And um, I was surprised to see that in Justice League issue, but I'm glad it, it shows somewhere. Um, and now the the story continues where this guy, maybe from Justice League of America, maybe from um, the government, steals the weaknesses of Superman, which of, of course is kryptonite, and where we where we get this cover, but um, that's the misleading part. Um, so they do steal something, and we can see also a story with Adam and um, Firestorm, we can see the, the new Justice League uh, team meet up, and they're supposed to have a meeting, and um, they're just staying there because the Justice League never showed up. It's like, would Batman do that and never show up? And they're like, oh, probably something happened. Um, that, that actually felt really Young Justice to me. That whole feel just felt really Young Justice. Just like kind of the younger recruits coming into the team. And it felt that, that scene really, it did feel like that. And I really liked that. Um, then we get to see um, kind of a main story for this issue. Which is them and um, Wonder Woman and Superman in Arabic Country. Um, trying to save these hostages. Um, but taking it on their own, not telling the government. So I was like, oh, this is kind of scary. They could do anything. Um, so we get to see that in this issue. And I'll talk more about... The politicalness of that um, part. Um, so we get to see Batman talks to Wonder Woman and Superman, saying how bad this was, saying that um, yeah, you weren't, you should have done that. I know it was for the right thing and everything, but the government, the really America doesn't love us right now. They're afraid of us, um, and we sort we see that with the government creating Justice League of America, trying to go against the Justice League if they do anything. They think they're too powerful and they can really turn on um, America, and that's why they're afraid. And seeing this without the government saying anything, going into a raid the country without saying anything, going into um, you know a, a terrorist country, um, you know a terrorist area, um, doing that it, without the government knowing is like oh. You know, that wasn't a good thing, and Batman's trying to explain that. And uh, Superman and Wonder Woman are kind of upset, saying, oh, well, we just tried to do the best thing that we could. But, but again, Batman's kind of just a word of reason. Um, and that's, that's what happened. Um, we'll talk about Shazam after, but I want to discuss about Justice League a little. Um, in the past, Justice League hasn't been the best. Um, honestly, the beginning was really weak, and it hasn't been what Justice League should have been. But so far the road to the Trinity War, without saying it's the road of the Trinity War, has been really good. Um, this whole issue is really the road to Trinity War without saying it. Um, we can see a lot of the Justice League of America not being saying, oh, we're, you know, we're part of the government, but it's being eluded. Um, again, the person who stole the, the equipment um, from Superman, you know, from Batman, but for, like, Kryptonite and all their weaknesses, um, that shows it really could should be the Justice League of America, or so, you know, agent from there. Um, and seeing this is alluding to the Trinity War, because, you know, that's what the Trinity War is going to be. Um, and then we get to see, also, the government, again, not trusting them. And, um, this is the political view I was going to bring a point about. Um, 
Now, I actually did a review for just uh, Jupiter Legacy um, last week, which is advanced reviews coming out next week, actually. Um, and I, I talked about how that issue had a political view, but it felt shoved. And um, I didn't have an example in the comic, you know, from the top of my head that um, where a comic shouldn't shove political views, but use it as a creative um, idea. And um, Justice League in this issue does that. They don't shove a political view. They show what the Justice League would be if they actually existed in our time with terrorism, with um, with Superman and Wonder Woman, honestly. Um, there's such strong people. And what would the government do? And, and right now, the government's scared of Superman and Wonder Woman. And uh, could they turn on the government? And um, them going into the terrorist country without the government saying anything, that was a political view, what Batman was trying to explain. You know, and I liked how they did that. Again, bringing maybe our problems right now and bringing it to the comic and really showing if our problems existed in the comic book and the Just League was around. And um, I like that. I like that. Again, it wasn't pushed, but it just it was a creative way to do it. Um, I really liked that in this issue, honestly. I did. And um, I think Just League, again, the road to the Trinity War is just making Just League its own. It's finally becoming its own and becoming a really good series. And um, I honestly really enjoyed this issue. Um, I think it wasn't too short because that's always been a complaint for Justice League because it does have the Shazam back up. So the stories do feel a little short, but it didn't feel short. Um, there's They had that, again, the Batman feel that we needed with Damien having that. Um, having the, the Young Justice feel, honestly, with the new recruits. And having this Wonder Woman and Superman statement. And this, this a lot of this just brings to the Trinity War. And again, I like it's not saying this is the prelude to the Trinity War. Um, that a lot of comics do. They're not saying that. But you could tell that's what's happening. And I like how it's a creative way to do this. And not you could see it's not like a force, forceful way to do it. And just trying to make money. They could really wrote prelude to Trinity War. But they didn't. And I, I like that about this issue. Um... Now let's talk about Shazam, which is always the reason I pick up this series, um, which is also a really good addition for the Justice League. Um, so we can see the continuation with Shazam, and that's Billy going underground trying to find the wizard. And he actually gets a call from Fran Francesca, who's helping Shazam, you know, helping Billy. And um, really, the, re the rest of the Force of Family are here too, just seeing, you know, all this happen. And they, they just thought, found out that Billy's Shazam. And they're like, what do you do? You know, this black guy, I'm trying to chase you. And they can't hear what Francesca is saying. Francesca is actually describing what happened to Black Adam, why is he this way, and, but the other Forster, um, uh, the Forster, uh, siblings can't hear this. It's because only mid magic people could hear that. I'll go back to that point. But, um, so Billy finds out again about Black Adam's past, and he's a kid, also Black Adam. So he's like, oh, well, I'm going to run. Let me go. I can talk to him. And trusting somebody. Now, that's a big problem with Billy because he's been pushed to foster family, to foster family. And he's trusting somebody. Black Adam was not the person to trust. So Black Adam's, like, ready to kill Billy in the end of this. The great cliffhanger. In the end of this, uh, you know, eight-page secondary story, Black Adam's ready to kill Billy. Um, now, one interesting thing I wanted to bring up was, again, when I mentioned about um, only magic people could hear, um... Francesca talking in the, in the iPad screen. Now, none of the other Forster um, siblings could hear this. I don't think Freddie was there um, at this moment, but Mary um, hears something um, because Francesca is saying, You're as connected as family now. And this is about Black Adam because only two magicians, you know, two magic people exist Shazam and Black Adam. They're like family. Um, and I guess that's also something in Billy's head saying, Oh, I should go to him if he's like family. I don't have a family. Or, you know, he doesn't think he does. Uh, but, uh, Mary, you know, she's like, Han, I heard family, so only magic people could hear that. So I think this could not just, uh, a origin for Shazam, but all origin for Miss Marvel in a different way. Um, or Mary Marvel, you know, um, that's what family, she heard about the magic, obviously she has the magic in her too, and I think it's obviously a different story, but it's interesting. Um, so I was very interested with that, and I'm sure we're gonna see more Freddy and Mary maybe discovering their magic, because, you know, they, they were, um... Uh, part of the Shazam family in pre-New 52, so I'm excited they're alluding to that in this issue. So really good uh, Shazam story. Honestly, I really love this issue of Justice League. It's my pick of the week. Really good. I really loved it. Um, good Justice League issue, good Shazam. This is what I want from every month of Justice League. This has to be the, the series of DC, and I'm hoping it's starting to be. I'm hoping the Trinity War, I'm hoping this is a good way to get into the Trinity War and 
be a good event and show. You don't need an event every year, but you could have a really good event every so often. And I'm hoping they do that with the Trinity War. And so far, seeing this being a prelude technically to the Trinity War, it's going for a good start. So I give this five stars. Just League, please don't disappoint me. So far, this was a really good issue. Pick of the week, guys. Pick this up. Shazam was also awesome. Read that. I know a lot of people try to skip it, but that's the reason I picked up Justice League. And I'm always going to say it. I want that to be an ongoing series. I hope one day it will be. But, um, hope you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno and our, um, just Comic Uno. But, you guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for Comic Uno and the Ryan situations. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.